Hello, friends, colleagues, students, C++ learners. I'm Dr. Satish Singhal, PhD, professor of computer information technology at Rose State College in Midwest City, Oklahoma, near Oklahoma City. Today I wanted to show you contrasting pass by reference and pass by value mechanisms in C++ through something called a swap function. Uh, you may not know this or you might know that. Swapping data between two memory locations is a very common technique in programming that is used for sorting data in ascending order. Uh, for example, if we consider this to be an array of value like each cell in this table is one element of the array, you'll notice that this integer array here is in unordered state. It's not in ascending or descending order. So in the sorted state, it will look like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 22, 55, 89, 90. So one technique of sorting that is used quite often is that we look at the pair of neighbors and you notice here that 10 is larger than 2. If we wanted array to be in ascending order, we'll swap 2 and 10. So that way at least the first pair is in the right order. So that's where swapping is used very often actually. Okay. So we want to show you uh, swap function ultimately could be used for that. But also at the same time we take opportunity to basically contrast the pass by reference and pass by value mechanism uh, through the swap functions. So we're going to do it this time, just go straight to source uh, code in Xcode and demo the two functions, two swap functions. One take values by parameters by value, pass by value mechanism, other takes parameter by pass by reference mechanism. All right, let's go to Xcode. Okay, so here's the Xcode and here I have a function called swap by value and notice that it is taking two integers val1 and val2 pass by value mechanism. Okay. And here's the main function here, but let's show you the code for swapping first. So this is the code for swap by value function. And swapping technology is very standard. Uh, after swap happens, val1 should have value stored in val2, and val2 should have value stored in val1. So the technique is that first we save the value val1 in this temporary variable called temp. Since we already saved val1, we can swap into this the value of val2, which we do with this here, and then val2 should have value val1, which I saved in the temp already, so I say val2 equal to temp, and we also print the memory address of val1 and val2 here in the swap by value function, okay? So how this code used? We set two numbers, num1 and num2 to 5 and 10, and we print their value before calling the swap by value function, which we are calling here on line 20. And obviously they'll print 5 and 10. Then we pass the num1 and num2 to swap by value function. And if swap will occur in the calling code in main, then the value should be changed, exchange. So we print them and finally we print the memory address of num1 and num2 in main function as well. Okay, so let's run this program. And build succeeded. So this is our result here. I'm going to move it up just a little bit. So you can see before calling the swap by value in main function, num1 was 5 and num2 was 10. 
as we set them here and we'll worry about the memory address in a minute but then after calling swap by value in main function well num1 and num2 remain the same so output from these two lines prints the current value and their values do not change why this swap does not happen transfer to main function although it is clearly happening here is the mystery cleared up and that's passed by value mechanism basically in action if we compare the memory address so memory address of num1 in main function and we really need to focus just on the last four digits because the rest of the digits are exactly same so 4316 but memory address of val1 in swap by value function is 4124 so even though we are passing the value of num1 and copying that into val1 when swap by value function is called, it's not the same variable. The piece of RAM where num1 is located is different from piece of RAM which is val1. Okay, and the same thing happens with the num2, memory address of num2 and val2, uh, memory address of num2 is 4312 memory address of val2 is really 4120. So basically even though num1 and num val1 have same value and num2 and val2 have the same value, uh, their location in the RAM is totally different. So swapping here into different variables which have really memory locations are totally different than num1 and num2 is not going to affect num1 and num num2. So swap by value function will not help us in sorting our array okay that's something very clear to us right now all right okay so how do we solve this problem we solve this by another another function where Parameters are passed by reference. So I'm going to collapse these and code in my swap by reference function, which is shown here, and the main function whose code I'll be looking at. So code for main doesn't really change that much except we call swap by reference function which is given here and notice the major difference between the two functions is only that here there's no ampere send sign here so here values are being passed by parameters are being passed by value I have to start saying parameters and here parameters are being passed by reference see when you put the ampere send sign means you pass by reference mechanism okay so in this case values are being passed by reference and swapping code is exactly same we save the val1 in temp then we swap value of val2 into val1 and then we swap value of temp into val2 and temp was val1 so swapping code does not change at all so let's run this one and see whether a swap actually happens or not okay so all right let's look at the results first okay before calling swap by reference in main function num1 equal to 5 num2 is 10 let's ignore memory address for a moment after calling swap by reference in main function num1 is 10 and num2 is 5 so this time swap has occurred when we pass by reference it seems to us that even though code is same as is swap by value the swap seems to have occurred this time okay so let's examine now 
the memory address in the two functions. Okay. Now I just wanted to uh, remind those who didn't know that to print memory address you can use this syntax. If this is my variable here that was declared here, uh, I can put the ampere sign and sign in the front. That will print the memory address, although that would be in hexadecimal form. So, so that we can make some sense of those numbers, we cast it long type. So that's the technique to print memory address in any function. So let's look at the fact that when we pass by reference, what's happening to the memory address of variables that were passed. So first we look at address of num1 in main function, which is really uh, this line being executed. And once again, we just need to focus on last four digits. Other digits are identical. So memory address of num1 in main function, last four digits is 4316. And memory address of val1 in function swap by reference is also same value, exact same value. So the meaning of that is that when we call swap by reference function in the main function and we pass in num1 and then we realize that address of val1 and num1 is identical, that simply means when we made this call, we actually passed the same location in the RAM where num1 is located. So when val1 is really passed, it's not a copy. It's really, val1 is actually an alias for num1. It's just another name for num1. So in pass by reference, you pass exact same variable, except if you named it differently, then it's just an alias for that. So it's basically passed by reference is an aliasing mechanism. You're just passing the same variable, just giving it a different name. And of course, you're free to keep the same name if you like, but generally we want to point out that name could be different. So val1 is just another name for num1. Okay, same thing happens with the val2. So here, memory address of num1 is 4312 in the main function but memory address of val2 in function swap by reference is also 4312. Identical number, identical number. And that means that val2 is same piece of RAM, which is num2. That means val2 is just an alias for num2, just another name for num2. It's actually being passed. Exact same thing is being passed here, except name is different. So that's why pass by reference mechanism works to swap the values. Pass by reference can change the values in the calling block because you're really passing exact same piece of RAM from the calling block uh, to the function that got called, okay? So that's pretty much it. We wanted to demo for you the swap function and show you that pass by reference the way to actually uh, swap values in the calling block. Uh, thank you so much. Bye.